Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is the fourth part of our first lecture on descriptive statistics and Islamic approach. In this portion, we will discuss the unique uh, features of the Islamic approach, which are very different from the Western approach to education. In broad terms, the Islamic approach works on both the heart and the head. Uh, this is in contrast with Western approach, which is purely intellectual, works only on the head. So, uh, we require two types of efforts to acquire knowledge. One is the mental effort, the work of the head. We have to struggle with the material that is being presented to try to understand it, to absorb it, to articulate it, which means expressing it to our own selves, in our own minds, in our own words, and also to explain it to others. So this is the mental effort. But at the same time, we must also make the spiritual effort, which is to make dua for uh, acquiring knowledge, for opening our hearts to the understanding, to fill our hearts with the importance of knowledge, and to make the right intentions for the use of this knowledge. And these are to serve the creation of God for the sake of the love of Allah. So the spiritual effort or the uh, learning of the heart requires the purification of the heart. Uh, my worship and my effort and my living and my dying all are for the sake of Allah alone. So in particular, the, my uh, working to acquire knowledge is also for the sake of pleasure of Allah. And it must be done for the sake of the love of Allah. And uh, the other part that is necessary is that we have to have humility. Uh, as the angels said, La ilmanana illa ma allamtana. We have no knowledge except that which you have given us. So we should feel that knowledge is a treasure, which, as uh, Allah Ta'ala says in the um, Ayatul Kursi, Allah, Allah is the source of all knowledge and we cannot have understanding of any small portion of it except by Allah Ta'ala's uh, desire. So whatever we have, it is a gift of Allah. He can take it from us or he can give it to us. So we have complete humility. We have no knowledge except that which Allah Ta'ala chooses to give us. So our struggle to acquire knowledge must be preceded by du'as and accompanied by du'as. This is just one of the many du'as for the seeking of knowledge. Allahumma anfa'ni bima allamtani wa'allimni ma yanfa'ni wazidni ilma that make me, um, teach me beneficial knowledge and increase my knowledge. Apart from making the right intentions, there is also the important issue of avoiding the wrong intentions for knowledge. So one should not seek knowledge to demonstrate superiority because that would be pride. Do not seek knowledge to argue with the ignorant. Do not seek knowledge for popularity, for fame, to entertain people. And there are very strong warnings for those who have these intentions. All of these intentions are for the use of knowledge, for the service of our own ego. And this is not acceptable. You remember the hadith, famous hadith about the alim and the shaheed and the generous person who will be presented to Allah. And uh, they will say that I acquired knowledge and I gave it to the people and Allah Ta'ala will say that you did this for the sake of fame and you were famous and there is nothing for you here. So the intention of using knowledge for the pleasure of Allah, serving the creation of God is not enough. We have to serve the creation of God by the use of the knowledge for the sake of the love of Allah alone and not for our personal benefits. One more aspect of the spiritual uh, training that we need to do in acquiring, acquiring knowledge is to fill our hearts with the desire for knowledge. Remember that in the first wahi starting with Iqra bismi rabbika allazi khalaq Allah Ta'ala introduces himself as the one who gives knowledge. Allam al-insan ma'lam ya'lam 
and he is the first teacher and the, he gave the knowledge to the prophets and the, all the prophets were teachers of mankind and they took them out of the darkness towards the noor of Allah. So knowledge is among the greatest treasures of Allah. The Allah Ta'ala taught Adam alayhi salam the names and then the angels were asked to make sajda to Adam alayhi salam. So uh, there are so many ayat and hadith which uh, tell us about the superiority of the alim. The superiority of the alim over the abid is like that of the sun over the stars. <coughs> The Prophet ﷺ encouraged learning by explaining to the Sahabi that you would like to acquire a free camel, but learning one ayat is even more precious than earning a camel as a gift. Remember that the camel was the biggest social symbol, status symbol in the Arabian society. So Allah Ta'ala has told us that وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا That those who struggle in our ways, we will guide them to our uh, pathways. So uh, the acquiring of knowledge is action-oriented. As we struggle to understand, we will be given the knowledge that we seek. So what is the struggle? There are many aspects and dimensions uh, to the struggle to understand. One is to be, uh, one is to value the knowledge we are be, being given, which means we try to absorb it and we try to recreate it in our mind. So there is an ayat that be not in haste, do not rush over the Quran, which is the source of all knowledge, but um, take it slowly, contemplate what you are being told, <clears throat> try to understand and to re-express the ideas in your own mind and in your own words, this is what will uh, create understanding. We must act upon the knowledge that we receive and it is this action that will actually create depth in the knowledge. So we must seek opportunities to use this knowledge. The simplest opportunity is provided by exercises which are given in <clears throat> the materials. So that gives you an opportunity to practice what you have learned. Uh, we have to translate this knowledge into action on all fronts. If there are other ways, we can go outside the book and the context and see if the knowledge that we have can be used to understand other aspects of the world that we are uh, living in. <clears throat> it must be clearly understood that there are two separate dimensions uh, of uh, understanding. One is the mental conceptual understanding and the other is the ability to put into practice. So for example you can read a manual for driving a car <coughs> and um, you can also have the experience. Now the one who has very knowledgeable about uh, knowing how to drive he may not be able to express the rules for driving. He just knows them but doesn't know uh, how to explain it and uh, somebody may be able to write the rules, but he may not be able to uh, practice them. He may not be able to. So both of these are distinct and we have to understand how to do both things. So I will illustrate this concept by, use, by showing it how it works for fractions. So to illustrate the difference between doing something and understanding something, think about the simple issue of adding the two fractions, one half and one third. So I can teach you a rule, I can teach a child a rule on how to do this. You just multiply the denominators and cross multiply the numerator and denominator. So then if we do that we get 3 over 6 and 2 over 6 and then we get 5 over 6 and that's the answer. Uh, this uh, rule will teach us how to add fractions but doesn't explain anything about understanding. You know, you can just do it as a black box and you get the right result, but you don't understand what happened. So if you want to get understanding, then you work in a different way. <clears throat> so you say to the student that, okay, take a pizza pie and make six slices of it. Now, how much is one half? Well, if you look at a picture, you can see easily that three slices is one half of a pie <clears throat> and one third is two slices because you take three portions like that and you get the whole pie. So the sum of three and two slices is five slices. So this gives you understanding 
Now note that if you if I explain to someone this way, he will understand why one half plus one third is five sixths, but he will not know the rule for adding fractions. If I give him different fractions, he will not know how to add them. So understanding and being able to calculate, these are two different things, and we must work on acquiring both of these understandings. This is like the heart and the mind. One is the conceptual and one is the practical. An important part of acting upon knowledge is that, first of all, we are required to do it throughout our lives, seek knowledge from the cradle to grave. But the very important part in the learning process is if we can explain it to others. The teacher has a much deeper understanding because of the process of teaching, not the other way around that he understands and then he becomes teacher, but, but actually it is the process of teaching that creates understanding. So we must be eager to spread knowledge to others, and this requires having a motivation for this, and then articulating, putting the knowledge into our own words, trying to break it down, trying to simplify, trying to explain to the others. And for this purpose, it is also important to value other seekers of knowledge, to give them respect and recognition and attention. As the Quran says, the first Sahufi Majalisikum that make room in your Majalis, in your circles of learning for the newcomers. So <clears throat> this is encouragement to attract others to seek knowledge and to encourage them in this uh, process. So this is the conclusion of all four parts of the prelim preliminary lecture, which only seeks to explain why an Islamic approach to, stat to, statistics, to statistics is very different from the uh, Western approach and um, from uh, in the next lecture we will start on actually doing statistics but I hope that this uh, these four parts have explained why we have a genuinely different uh, way uh, from the Islamic point of view of approaching the subject.